The legal profession is facing three main challenges, it seems to me. The first is the cost pressure, the more for less challenge. General counsel continue to say they're under three pressures. First of all, to reduce their internal headcount. Secondly, to pay less to external law firms. And yet thirdly, they say they have more legal and compliance work to do than ever before. And for many years, this is going to determine much that goes on in the legal world. The second pressure is new competition, whether that be major accounting firms, or perhaps legal publishers, or legal tech startups. The competition that kills you doesn't always look like you, so law firms need to be prepared to recognise there are new players on the block. And the third pressure is, of course, technology. This is what I've spent much of my career looking at. And in my latest book, co-authored with my son, Daniel, we look at the future of the professions, and we see two broad uses of technology. The first we say is reassuringly familiar. This is where firms, organizations, professions use technology to streamline and optimize what they've been doing for years. So it might, for example, be a doctor seeing a patient over Skype or an architect using computer-assisted design. In law, we see this in the production of documents, in communication with clients, not fundamentally changing the way they work, but streamlining and optimizing the traditional methods. The second future we see for the professions and for lawyers as well is far more profound. This is where many of the tasks that we've thought traditionally could only be undertaken by human lawyers are in fact replaced by the technology. We're seeing a new wave of systems emerging, what we call a second wave of artificial intelligence. And they'll have impact on how we resolve disputes, how we negotiate contracts, how we draft, how we advise. We're going to see the advent of online courts, of online document generation, online drafting, even online negotiation. And this is a set of challenges that seems to me that uh, many law firms are not yet facing squarely. The major firms often say something to me like this. They say, we get this, Richard. We understand there's going to be major change in the profession, but it doesn't really affect us. We do bet the ranch deals and disputes. Our work is in some sense price insensitive, and it doesn't really affect us the kinds of changes you're talking about. No one ever got fired for buying IBM. Uh, in the scheme of things, a million dollars here or there and a huge deal of dispute makes no odds. That's the argument. I think this is problematic for a few reasons. First of all, I think we're seeing the decomposition of legal work, the breaking down even of the most complex deals and disputes into component parts. And the more routine parts are now being done not by law firms. They're being outsourced, offshored, systematized, resourced in new ways. Secondly, as I said, we're seeing the advent of new competitors. And so while no one ever got fired for buying IBM, we're seeing new players like the accounting firms and the publishers that are equally reputable at board level. And they will build formidable legal businesses too, but working differently and so perhaps undercutting in a serious way. The third possibility, which I find most exciting, and hopefully it'll be one of my clients, is that one of the major law firms might break rank. One might fundamentally reinvent itself fundamentally reduce the cost of its service, heavily rely on technology, deliver legal satisfaction in entirely new ways. That remains to be seen. But I think the challenges for big law are, are fairly clear. The first is they need to optimize using technology and other methods, standardize and systematize the way they currently work. The second is there's a need for transformation for some of the services. Much that's done in the current law offices is antiquated, it's opaque, it simply doesn't sit comfortably in the modern commercial world, and we need to rethink and transform much of current working practice. The third is more radical, and that's diversification. My first job ever was with Ernst & Young. I walked into the lift the first morning I was employed, and there was an advert on the wall. It said, we don't help you add up, we help you multiply as well. This was their message as they moved from being accountants to being general business advisors. We're going to see the same in law. Around the world, I'm being approached by law firms that are thinking of setting up consulting practices, risk management practices, legal knowledge engineering services. So it's about optimizing, transforming, and diversifying. Those firms that embrace these three, it seems to me, will succeed. Others who want to rely on 20th century ways of working will be struggling.